Bender, Rako, Ramsey, Rapid River, Drummond Island, Ripley, Rudyard, Rumley, Sugar Island, Gastronema, Brimley, Tapiola, Munich. Hi, this is Jim Islip with MSU Extension, and this is What's Up at Uprec on March 29, 2021. Today we're going to do some renovation pruning on one of the old apple trees here at the Michigan State University Upper Peninsula Research and Extension Center in Chatham, Michigan. You can see that this tree has not been tended in many years. It is probably a volunteer apple having started from a seed that was dropped by a deer or uh, an apple core or something many years ago. And you can see that it's overgrown, it's very dense, and our task today is going to be thinning this tree out. We can remove up to a third or even 40% of all the wood in the tree without really damaging its health. What it will do is it'll respond by growing extremely vigorously It'll have an extensive root system, uh, which will no longer have as much wood to support above ground. So it, it's very similar to applying nitrogen fertilizer when you prune very hard on an uh, established, healthy tree like this. So let's get started. Just a few words about the tools that we're gonna use today. You see, I've got my homemade orchard ladder here. This is a tripod ladder. It's safer than a step ladder or a regular two-legged ladder. It's much more stable on uneven ground. It was an inexpensive project to build. I have the plans from an old farm carpentry book. I'd be glad to send them to anybody that wants them. My email is, is uh, included in the video. I also have a variety of saws. Now you'll notice I'm not using any power tools today. A lot of people don't have power tools and I prefer not to use them. Uh, a tree like this, if you are good and safe with a chainsaw, this would be a good candidate for using a chainsaw and save a lot of time. But instead, I'm just gonna use a bow saw. I call this a camp saw. I have a couple different sizes. I also have a little higher quality saw. This one has an adjustable blade so I can set it at different angles. It's made by a company called Baco. All right, so there's my saws. I also have a, a pruning saw here one from the hardware store. It also has an extendable handle. So you can, you, can, uh, you can reach up into the tree to some degree with this pruning pole. It, it stretches out quite a long way, but that, that handle is quite flexible and it's kind of hard to, uh, to make a, a big cut with that at any distance. It's, it's better used as a, as a hand saw and then get up into the tree to make those longer cuts. This is a real useful tool. This is an extendable pole pruner, and you can, uh, you can adjust the angle on the head to, to get into tighter spots if you want to. And, and you can reach uh, 12 or 14 feet from the ground up into a tree with this pruner. And then to activate the cutter, it has a sliding handle here. So that's a very, very useful tool. A little expensive but worth it if you have a lot of pruning to get done every year. And then you'll want a pair of, of hand lops. I have a couple of, of bypass uh, lopping pruners. This one is, has got some, some more uh, power to it. It's geared, so it'll really cut through some bigger things. This is a standard kind of a lop pruner. Uh, this one also has extendable handles, so you can get more leverage and you can reach further up into a tree. Then we have uh, even a heavier duty lopping pruner. This one is kind of an anvil type cutter. It's not bypass, but for a real, uh, a bigger limb to save time, you, we wouldn't have to saw. This will cut through things an inch or so uh, in diameter, maybe an inch and a half, pretty easily. Then I have a, uh, this is a real nice little pruning saw. I got it at a thrift store and had it sharpened by a local saw sharpener. A very nice little pruning saw. You want to keep your tools sharp. If you have a healthy tree, disinfecting with a 10% bleach solution between trees is a good idea. If the tree has had fire blight, it's a good idea to, to disinfect between cuts. Adds a lot of time to your pruning, but you'll be sorry if you spread disease all over your tree. We also have some, some smaller hand tools, which I'm not going to use very much on this tree because 
We've got big changes to make on this tree. Not gonna do, try to do a lot of fine work. In following years, with, with follow-up maintenance pruning, it'll take two or three years to get this tree calmed down so it quits regrowing so vigorously and the root system and the top growth gets back into balance. So you can plan on uh, probably three years of corrective pruning to keep this tree from, from developing too much vertical growth and becoming too thick and it's gonna take annual maintenance pruning every year after that. And a little folding saw. When I'm doing maintenance pruning, those are my two main tools. But for this type of pruning, the saws are really where we're gonna start. There are some pretty easy choices here. This big four or five inch uh, branch that's growing up out of another branch and then curling around down here, that's gotta come out right away. These limbs that are big, that are growing up into the top of the tree, we're going to remove some of that. That'll thin the tree out a lot. Our first thing is to make big cuts and remove large limbs so that we don't end up spending a lot of time making small cuts and then deciding to remove a whole large limb. One of the first things we have to do here is remove some of this wood that's down low so that we can get in and, and navigate around in these lower branches. So let's, uh, let's start with cutting out, making a couple of big cuts. We're gonna take this whole lower thing right out of here, save this, save this upper branch. All right, there's, there's one good size chunk. There's a lot of cleaning up needs to be done on this tree, just so you can get in and move around. Anything that's dead, like these little limbs I'm taking out right now, anything that's growing down toward the ground, branches that are uh, growing right on top of one another, crowding one another, they can be cut out. This is a nice vigorous tree. It's got a lot of, a lot of life in it. And there's no reason it shouldn't be very productive. And I don't know what variety it is. If it's a volunteer apple, then it's probably not any particular variety. But in this area, in the central UP, there was a lot of Duchess of Oldenburg apples planted by early farmers. I've created an opening here, the initial opening into the center of the tree, so I can get in here and work. And you'll see we got some vertical uh, limbs. These are gonna come out of this tree. We need to open it up. This one's growing vertically out of a branch and then right through the middle of the tree, that's gotta go. Some of this other material that's in here, I am gonna cut out while I'm in the center. I'm not going to uh, video the whole business, it'll take too long, but we'll come back and see what I've accomplished in a little bit. You can see that I'm being very aggressive with this pruning today. This is an old, neglected tree, badly in need of renovation. To open it up, to remove structural branches that are crowded and in the way and rubbing and crossing. Old timers like to say, if you can take off your hat and throw it up in the top of the tree and it'll come down through the branches without getting caught, it is thinned out enough. This is a good example of a limb that's growing right above another limb. That bottom limb is coming off. Low branches like this one here have no use really. They get in the way if you're trying to mow around an old tree or you're simply trying to get in to pick apples or pick up deer apples. So that low stuff is coming out and I need to thin up this side of the tree. So I'll get busy and then I'll come back and we'll pick up there. We've made a lot of progress thinning out the bottom of this tree. Removed a lot of dead branches, removed a lot of extraneous branches, and uh, made a lot of major cuts. The middle of the tree is wide open now. There's still some thinning out to do on a couple of branches, and I'm going to uh, proceed with that right now. This is about the right time of year for pruning. It's the end of March, first week of April or so. 
My rule of thumb is when you can move around, there's not too much snow left on the ground, that's a good time to prune in Alger County. You may be someplace where there's not as much snow as we get here. But if you wait too long and the buds start to swell up a lot, then when you pull out all of these great big overgrown branches, you'll be breaking off a lot of buds. And that won't really hurt the tree, but it will break off a lot of flower buds and you won't get as much flowering. This spring, this tree is gonna flower normally and this tree should bear fruit this year, but it's gonna grow like crazy vegetatively in response to this heavy pruning. We're gonna not have very many flower buds formed for the following year. The year after this, we will not have very much fruit. Matter of fact, for two or three years, we won't have very much fruit because the tree will be growing vegetatively. We try to make our cuts just into the collar at the base of the branch and that will lead to good healing. MSU does not recommend painting these cuts with uh, wound dressing or latex paint. That just simply seals in moisture, gives insects and diseases a better chance to get established. I'm gonna select branches that I can reach in case I wanna pick fruit later. I don't want the branches extending out too far. Uh, I'll leave some of these side branches, but not all of them by any means. Some of these cuts are no-brainers. If they're dead, it's gotta go. If it looks diseased, it's gotta go. But other Otherwise, you have to make decisions about what's too crowded, how much do I want to open up, what do I want to leave, and what do I want to take. And uh, frankly, this tree wasn't worth a hoot, as overgrown it is, as it was, except maybe for deer apples, which is okay. A lot of people want their apple trees just for that purpose. But anything that's going to be completely shaded really ought to be removed. Okay, let's just get this stuff out of the way. Okay, you can see how open this is now. This is getting to be a very big brush pile. And these cuttings are a reservoir for insects and disease. And they really need to be hauled away from the apple tree. Best if they're burned or buried, at least hauled some distance away. We're back to finish pruning up this tree. The weather changed yesterday with high winds. So I put off finishing the tree until today, March 30th. You can see it's a little warmer. It is still breezy, but the snow is all melted. Before we start, let's just take a quick walk around, have a 360 degree look at this tree. One thing I noticed as I worked on it yesterday is that it has a double trunk. That trunk comes up out of the ground and splits. And basically, we could have two separate trees here. So I'm continuing to prune with that idea in mind that at some time in the future, one of these trees might need to be removed. So we'll keep some vertical growth intact out of each of those trunks. Lots of big cuts made yesterday. And I'd say we're three quarters of the way done pruning this tree at this point. This tree's structure lends itself for climbing in and having a good secure place to stand and lots of limbs to hang on to. So instead of using the ladder right in the center of the tree, I'm just gonna climb up in there. I may use the ladder to get some of these branches cleaned up later. So we'll speed up the camera again, try to save a little time and you'll get the idea. I'm going to use the same ideas, thinning out branches that are growing down, thinning out branches that are growing above each other. I want to shorten this tree somewhat so it won't be so hard to reach it for picking fruit or for future pruning. That's what I'm trying to accomplish. This one here is growing above above this one. Uh, I know I've already made one cut, but I believe I'm gonna take this right off and just keep this lower branch. All right. That's a fair amount of uh, work on that particular area of the tree. I need to get over there and clean that part up. Maybe I can get that with the ladder. Let's see if there's something, anything I can reach. Over on this side, it's too thick here. These branches, some of them need to go. That'll be easy enough to accomplish. I want to be sure that there's some room between these branches so light can get through and fruit can ripen well. 
Okay, there's that one gone. So once again, I can get up into the tree, standing on the lower branches without any difficulty and get a lot of that top work done that way. I made some mental notes to myself which ones to take off from down on the ground because once you get up in, into the tree, the perspective is very different. Now I, I'm gonna take this high part out so that it won't have so much wood to cope with in the future. I wanna be sure and be secure and safe on here. Things that are growing straight up. Although I don't wanna spend a lot of time on smaller work since we have these big limbs to deal with. But this is the one I'm after right here. I'll be coming back with the lots to try to clean up some of this smaller stuff. But for now, I want to take out some wood here. This one grows up into the middle. It's got to come off. I don't want this tall stuff. I'm just going to keep some side branches. I'm going to take it off right here and remove everything higher than that on this branch. This is a pretty, this is a pretty major cut right here. Make myself comfortable and starts on. It's a good idea to put a little bit of a slant on the cut so that when it rains, the water runs off of the cut surface. It doesn't just sit there and soak in. And there we have it. Okay, now, gotta do something about the, uh, the end of this branch here. It's gonna be shading out this lower branch, but I don't wanna remove all of it. So I'm gonna try and make a cut. I'll keep this side branch and I'll keep that side branch. I'll take this one off. Perfect, that's gone. This one's gonna go. It's easier for me to cut downward, but sometimes I have to cut upward just because that's the way the cut has to be. And now finally, I wanna take this one off. And I can get the rest of that smaller stuff with the lops or the pole pruner. Let's see, where am I at here? I have another little branch here that really ought to be removed. And this is looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna come down, take a look around from the ground, and see what I think then. Well, here's our tree with all of the major saw cuts made. There's still some wood that I want to take out, but I can get it with a lopping shear or with a pole pruner. I might use a saw here and there, but this is what she looks like now. I'm going to do a little cleaning up and then we'll be done. I'll be using this powerful lopper here. This twiggy stuff that's growing right out of the trunk doesn't do much for us. So I like to clean that up a little. The branch like this is shading everything underneath it, so that's why I'm removing it. You may see, see things and you're saying, why isn't he cutting this and why isn't he cutting that? Well, there's always next year. We continue working our way around the tree. Here's a dead branch. Okay, that one looks pretty good there. This one here needs a little thinning out. Uh, this branch is too crowded. This one hangs low, and if it gets full of fruit, it's gonna really hang low. Okay, I think I've accomplished everything I can do from the ground, so it's time to get my ladder. Okay. We'll take off some of these larger branches that are shading the ones below. Okay, that one I, I'd like to get off. There we go. Uh, I don't like this one. I'm gonna extend my pruner so I can reach a little further. Take that one out. And maybe I'll get this one here and this one underneath and we'll call that good enough. And since I have my hand shear handy, I'll just snip it off with the hand shear. There's meristematic tissue at the base of those little side branches and it, the tree will sprout vigorously from that tissue. Some of this stuff that's growing underneath really ought to go. I'll take off this piece right here and just leave some of this smaller stuff on top. Okay, that's enough for that branch. All right, this is now uh, the highest part of the tree. You know, I think I'll take it even further back than that. I'm not too real timid about taking some of it down. I don't like the tree to be real tall. That's gonna come off. And this piece right here is gonna come off. 
Okay, we're gonna use the pole pruner to do a little bit of thinning, and you'll see how convenient this tool really is. It, you give up a little bit of accuracy for the convenience. I'm gonna extend the pole pruner a bit. Let's see if I can get in there and cut that. All right, this one is too crowded. This one is too long. This one grows over top of the other one. Well, right here. There we go. And lo and behold, that's pretty good. This fine work is not very important. When you're doing a major renovation, the idea is that you'll be back working on this tree every year. You'll have plenty of opportunity to clean up little things that you might have missed. Especially this stuff that jabs you and pokes you when you're climbing into the base of the tree. Okay, I say we're done. We want to clean up all the brush that's laying around, get it in a pile so we can haul it away. Get my tools all picked up. I want to clean and sharpen them and disinfect them before I move on to another tree. A dull tool is actually more dangerous than a, a nice sharp one because you, you find that you don't have to strain to make your cuts. It's less tiring and uh, just all together makes the job go faster, even easier and safer. I mentioned before that the old timers would say, if you can throw your hat up into the tree and it comes down without getting caught, your tree's thinned enough. Let's give that a try. Well, got caught on that branch. Let's try it again. Oh, it came through that time. One final walk around so we get a good look at our end result. You may choose to be a little less aggressive than I've been with this tree. And that's perfectly fine. Might take you a few years to get it thinned out to the point where you want it. I prefer to get aggressive with it and try to whip the tree into shape as quickly as possible. And this tree looks very different than it did yesterday. There's plenty of other old volunteer apples at Uprec. Here's another one, a bit smaller. It's right next to the one that we just pruned. Here's a bigger one, a little closer to the highway, right in the same area. This is a, a quite a lot larger than the one we just pruned. And if you were to tackle this one, you'd almost certainly want to be using a power saw. Here's another nice big old volunteer apple right in the fence line along the highway here at Uprec. It's overgrown, it's very tall. If this was my apple tree, I would shorten it by about half. This also happens to be a bearing tree. It has a nail painted with a sign that shows it was used for survey work. So it's an important tree. There are many informative resources available online to help you understand pruning better. These samples from Penn State Extension and Oregon State University Extension are good examples. A Google search will generate many useful pruning publications and videos. That's what's up at Uprec. Hope to see you again next time. Well, I'm so glad I'm living in the old U.